All right, Nick, let's talk about the New York Jets. This is a team that, being in New York, they get covered quite a bit by the big media, and especially since Aaron Rodgers was brought into the fold. There's been a lot of spotlight on this team, Nick, but today we have a story that was before all that. It starts last season, and it shows that grit, determination, and being in the right place at the right time can give you an opportunity to show what you're made of. And once you get that opportunity, can you make the most of it? There is a player on the Jets, Nick, who has made the most and now made themselves a surprise candidate for a very important position on this team. Yeah, my this young Jets playmaker. Look, he is impressing everyone. He's making waves, and Jets fans should be excited by this development. But before we get into that story, New York fans got an interesting question for you guys to answer in the comment section below. Who is the greatest offensive lineman, in your opinion, in New York Jets team history? There's a lot of great names. I'm a Kevin Mawai guy myself, but I know there's a lot of great options out there. Whoever it is, make sure you put in the comment section below the greatest offensive lineman in Jets history. But I must throw it back to you now. What do you have out of New York? Yeah, Nick, I think that there is a Jets offensive lineman who came into the league and he was supposed to be one of the bets. That was none other than Mekhi Becton, a guy who had all the physical tools and size to be one of the best O-linemen we had ever seen. But we all know the story and it doesn't pan out that way. And Nick, last year, Becton came in, looked great, as he always does, then gets injured, fractured his right kneecap. He was done for the season just in August. The But the Jets had a plan, Nick. They brought in Dwayne Brown for a two-year, $20 million deal. He was going to be the next stopgap at that position. Nonetheless, Brown then tore his rotator cuff, and he, again, was put on injured reserves, and the Jets were look to, left to look, turning to find another tackle. Enter. Max Mitchell, a guy they drafted as a rookie that season who never really was supposed to sniff any playing time, Nick. And I'm going to get into the article now that really does a great job of going through the story. This was over on heavy.com, Nick, and uh, it was also from Yard Barker as part of the article. Uh, But it says, a New York Jets youngster has a remarkable turnaround. Rich Simney of ESPN was recently tasked with selecting a surprise offseason standout from the Gang Green roster. He chose offensive tackle Max Mitchell as the guy that piqued his curiosity over the last handful of months. The 23-year-old went from probably not playing as a rookie to being shoved into the spotlight, a la the injuries we discussed earlier. Then, having his NFL career almost ripped away from him, he had a blood clotting disease, and it was determined that it was treatable by medication. So that's where this story now leads us to heading into the 2023. He now has a legitimate shot at being a day one starter of his own volition and not because of injuries, Nick. That is very important here. Rosenblatt joined me on the Boy Green Show on in June and said that Mitchell and Billy Turner shouldn't be forgotten about at the right tackle competition with Becton during training camp. So Nick, all of this, needless to say, that Max Mitchell came from a position where he was at best probably some depth at the tackle position, got sprung into the spotlight due to some severe injuries at the tackle position for the Jets, and played admirably worked hard, and showed that he deserved a shot. He got injured. He comes back, worked even harder, comes into this 2023 season, and now is cementing himself as a solid option in this right tackle battle because we don't know what Mekhi Becton is going to do. We don't know what any of these other guys are going to be like, but we do know one thing about Max Mitchell, and this guy is tough as nails, Nick. He doesn't let anything stop him, and I think He is a very interesting option to keep our eyes on coming into this season. But before I get your thoughts on this, Nick, I would like everyone to stay tuned to the end of the video to hear a word from our partner of today's video, and that is Neuro. They have a lot of great products, give you a quick and easy boost of energy. We'd love to take their mints or gum right before the show. Help us give you the best Jets content possible. So stay tuned to the end of this video to hear more about Neuro and to get your hands on our discount code. But Nick, nonetheless, Let's hear what you have to say about the ever-present right tackle battle for the New York Jets. 
Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head comparing it in your opening comments there with Makai Becton. Of course, like we alluded to, Becton is just probably one of the more talented guys at the tackle position in all the football. Great footwork, great size, great pedigree, has everything you want, but he seems to lack the mental toughness. And I'm not talking about the injury concerns because that's not something you can really con uh, control in terms of mental toughness, but he seems to have control issues controlling his weight, seems to fluctuate. He has the pictures of himself in shape, but then there's always pictures, you know, a few months later, he seems to be a little out of shape, seems to be a little out of control in terms of his weight. At times, and to me, that's a mental toughness thing. That's a professionalism thing. You don't get that with Mitchell, right? This is a guy who got thrown into the starting spotlight, like you alluded to. Multiple injuries put him in there. He did a respectable job, did a solid job. Certainly as a rookie, what he did was very commendable. And keep in mind, Mize, he did about as good, according to PFF, as Billy Turner did last season with the Denver Broncos. So this wasn't like Mitchell was some scrub that they thought, oh, this guy stinks. We're just throwing him in there because he, he we had to. Billy Turner, a guy they brought into the fold, did essentially just as good with Denver Broncos. So that's the level Mitchell played at as the rookie last season. Not a scrub at all. But I think I really love when you kind of talked about the toughness on Mitchell's side. Here's a guy who gets a starting opportunity, then has a rare blood clotting issue in his leg that at the time was rumored to be career ending. He overcomes that, is now can handle it with medication, and now he's right back to competing and competing at a high level. That's the kind of mental toughness I want at the offensive line. Look, we see all these talking heads all the time say, oh, we really need great feet. You need a great kick step. You need great hand placement, all that kind of stuff. Knee bend. You got to have good hips. And look, all that stuff matters. It does. I get it. I understand completely. But a lot about playing offensive line is about toughness because you get your butt kicked a lot on the offensive line. You're going, going up against a lot of great pass rushers, a lot of great run stuffers. You're going to have guys that blow by you. You're going to give up a sack. You're going to give up five sacks. You're going to give up some holding penalties. You're going to give up false starts. How do you overcome that? You're going to have a terrible game. How do you overcome that and move on to the next play, to the next game, the next week, the next month? You have to be mentally tough. Makai Becton isn't at this point. I think we can pretty solid, solid, uh, solidly say that. Look, I hope he overcomes it. I really do. I like the kid. I think he's got a great personality, a lot of great energy, but I don't think he's mentally tough enough. Mitchell is. And for a team that's set to win now with Aaron Rodgers, that defense and the playmakers they have on offense, they need to have an offensive line that is mentally tough and can handle that kind of pressure. I think Mitchell is that guy. I would not be surprised at all, Mice, if Mitchell is starting at right tackle come week one for the New York Jets on his mental toughness and fortitude and effort and want to alone. This is kind of one of those gritty uh, gritty stories that I love to hear in football. And Mitchell, to me, is going to be just a perfect example of what Jets football under Robert Sala is going to be about. All right, Mice, we would like to give a special thanks to our partner today's video, Neuro. That's right, Nick. And I want you to go with me on a journey really fast. I want you to imagine this. It's fourth and goal in the big game, Nick. Your team is relying on you to make the big-time game-winning play. I know you've been in this situation before, Nick. The stadium is roaring. The clock is ticking. The game is on the line. But if only in that moment you were able to have some neuro gum. Neuro gum will help you stay concentrated, and it gives you a burst of energy without a nasty crash. That's right, Mize. Neuro has thoughtfully curated ingredients and does endless, endless lab testing, which means that you can reach the right state of mind safely and consistently. That's the most important part. It gives you a clean burst of energy and focus without the jitters of coffee or any of those other energy drinks. That's right, Nick. And if you click our sponsor link in the description below, you can enjoy energy, calm, and focus whenever you need it.